a news program from a native perspective, whether it's a flag pole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Today we visit the town of Kivalin, Alaska, a town that's been under the microscope of all Alaskans these days. Who are these people and what issues are they facing? We find out today on Heartbeat Alaska. I'll be right back with Kivalina right after this. We watch Heartbeat Alaska! Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Welcome back. For the past few weeks, Kivalina, Alaska has been the focus of media coverage. There have been accusations going back and forth, ending up with the departure of several school teachers and the closing of the school by the school district. The school is now reopened at this time. On today's program, we visit with the people of Kivalina, the people that have been caught in the middle, the residents that have lived there in this beautiful village for ages and ages, people that struggle with daily life and rejoice with one another, fellowship like this program, where we're invited to an Easter celebration, a chance to get to know the good people in Kivalina, Alaska. The people of Kivalina have lived for generations along the shores of the Eight Mile Barrier Reef that separates the Chukchi Sea and the Kivalina River, which the village takes its name from. Being the center of the surrounding villages for meetings and trade for countless generations, Kivalina only recently incorporated as a city in 1969. Its people are Inupak Eskimo living a subsistence lifestyle that depends on the hunting of fish, seal, walrus, caribou, beluga, and bowhead whale. They also pursue careers that range from commercial fishing to teaching at the local schools. Many in the community also supplement their incomes with native arts and crafts, which is a growing industry in the small village. Kivalina was built on the traditional meeting place for indigenous people of the area who traveled along the Chukchi Sea looking for migrating animals such as caribou and whale. In fact, it is the only remaining village in the region that still annually hunts bowhead whale. Whale only comes the migration at one time, not all the time, but once. When the season comes. Living a subsistence lifestyle depends on the bounty of the land and sea, but also the generosity of the people living together. One of the teachers donated this one. She donated a couple of these. Look, see, no shells, so they won't choke. Kivalina maintains a long held tradition of sharing, not only among its own residents, but any visitor passing through the area over the years. The food they offer is a blend of traditional and modern day dishes that are prepared by the residents to nourish both mind and body. 
Well, then they know they could come back next year, Easter time, and was greeted, was hospitality, was was taken care of and fed. We dip like this. I grew up with this. It's a it's more um, meat sauce. No problem. <laughs> I just use salt, rice, and um, potatoes. That's all. That's all? No special recipe or anything. Just your basic one, two, three caribou stew. <laughs> Part of the town's role in hosting such an event is housing and feeding everyone that comes in to visit and participate in the religious holiday. Somebody has to meet our visitors, bring them to the coffee shop, have them a bite to eat, something to drink, so that they can get satisfied in their stomach and then they can go to their place of visitation, wherever they're staying in the village. This year's celebration was clouded earlier by problems in the local school that not only sent shockwaves through the village, but throughout the state as well. After a series of escalating events between students and teachers involving alleged threats, the region superintendent shut down the school in order to separate sides and maintain the safety of everyone. Word of the closure spread like wildfire, and soon statewide media coverage painted a very unattractive picture of Kivalina with their headlines and television screens. I know that it's just, um, in my own feeling, it's just a one-size story. Media has a lot to do with this. It, it's only a small thing as far as I was told. It's just a small thing. And then it has other stories when you tell other people through the phone or through person that, and then it elaborates more and more and it gets bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, there's all sorts of rumors. I, like I've heard it, it's no different than any other villages. Other villages have a problem. And one of the reasons, um, I wouldn't say which person is bad, which community is no good, I wouldn't say that. It's just that um, we get selfish sometimes. We get greedy. Each, and, each human being does that. When we come back, we'll see how Kivalina, Alaska residents are dealing with the negative press while still embracing their fabulous Easter celebration. Stay tuned. I watch hard in Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. Now, where's this one go? One of them goes on one, and then the other one goes on the other one. And then it's going to go right on up, okay? After Can two weeks of closure, McQueen School reopens with new substitute teachers to replace the five employees of the school that left following the controversy. The Carnahans were a teaching couple with experience in rural Alaska that volunteered to come out of retirement to teach in Kivalina. Their experience with the kids has been positive for both so far. The only thing I know that was going wrong in the school sort is what I read in the media, but I didn't believe it all. All of us love something. All of us are kind to something. In other words, we have these, these traits, and uh, we felt that maybe the appreciation and respect, mutual back and forth, and if, if you want respect, you build it first and offer it to the person that you would like to have respect. Oh, I'm sure they're working some things out. And I never, I spend so much time working out in the field and I very have very much involvement in the school. What's important to us, 
how to how to live our life as parents or in the community. This this is what um, what's good. About what I like about this um, That means the decision, the educational decisions of youngsters rests with the governing body that's elected. The task force assigned to the school presented a statement to the community that attempted to address the problems, mainly lack of discipline and poor test results with students that they felt needed more support by all adults in Kivalina. Our small rural schools, from my perspective, must successful and if they are not being successful we need to assist the local boards the advisory boards the communities in helping turn that around it is what it is it is what we recognized and i would hope that when we leave here today that the discussion isn't over the arguments and inconsistencies of the report but more the discussion becomes one of do we accept responsibility in whatever portion we can? And how do we move forward for the benefit of kids? It slaps the community. It slaps the district. It slaps the teachers. I mean, it doesn't leave anybody alone. So there's plenty enough blame to go around. Despite the harsh words of the task force's report, many residents were already willing to move forward and help. They're very right. But if, if that test is based on a different culture, they're going to have problems with it. And that's something that needs to be addressed. What we need to do as a community, if there's any bitterness, we need to come together. We need to pull together. I think that's the only way we can start heading in the positive direction. We can knock out all that negativism that was portrayed upon this community by the media. The spirit of love and kindness is still alive and it's still going like the way it was taught. Local teacher Enoch Adams has seen it all from the inside out. Being raised in Kivalina as a child, he grew up within its educational process. After graduating from high school, he furthered his education by studying education in college and becoming a teacher. After returning home to Kivalina, he now is in his 15th year of teaching at the McQueen School. The main reason I wanted to become a teacher was um, it was the only job that I could be paid well and stay home at the same time. It's my turn. This is right. Problems in the past have always, always having to do with language. Our kids really do know two languages, and that's, that's English, official English, and, and village English. There needs to be a plan put together by this community that, that needs to be spearheaded by this community with the help of help of our uh, school district in uh, developing a plan for for our school that would um, well basically address the the low scores of our kids with the uh, state tests and and also giving our kids the basic skills for for finding a job for themselves. Try to make it fun with hands-on experiences. So we have hands-on reading. We have our regular curriculum, and then we have our hands-on uh, reading, math, science, and that's how we got into this rocket project the, the last 10 days. We've got some activities. They're having fun with the new teachers. to work. I believe it's, it's a situation that could have been dealt with without giving Kulina a black eye. I think we've had a lot of heal educational healing uh, because, again, of the successes 
and our students are showing it. Just slide it on there. The things that that were stated in, in the article, all the things that happen, they're just a reflection of of the actions of a few people. Uh, they don't reflect the actions of of most of our people. It's a human interest story that that's kind of dark in in a lot of respects. Doesn't reflect what most of our how most of our people are here. It would take more than local strife and outside negative hype to overshadow the Easter celebration in Kivalina, Alaska. When we come back, we'll see how this town invites so many people to join in worship and song. Heartbeat wishes to thank Haglin Aviation Services Incorporated for making our stories possible. We travel on Haglin Aviation and we thank you for choosing them too. Haglin Aviation has been serving Alaskans in the bush for over 20 years. We fly Haglins all the time. Operating with 29 aircraft at eight stations across Alaska and servicing over 100 destinations daily. Haglin Aviation, your ticket to ride in rural Alaska. Bye, Dad. Bye, Junior. From generation to generation, the passing down of tradition has been the native way. You never eat snow because it'll always, it'll get you tired. Survival in the Alaska wilderness depends on one's knowledge of ancient native secrets. Nowadays we carry this. I always carry it next to your body. It's water. Purity guaranteed. Aquafina. Despite any bad press over the last month, the village of Kivalina is full of smiles and generous hearts as the first visitors arrive for the big Easter celebration. Welcome to Kivalina! The annual event draws dozens and dozens of people from around the region and even as far as the lower 48 some years. After arriving by plane, the visitors are brought to the local meeting hall, affectionately called the coffee house. Here they are treated to local foods offered by their generous hosts, such as salmon, seal oil, and even homemade donuts. And our ladies made this um, flour, yeast, sugar, milk, and Crisco. Usually they have it done. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But uh, these people who came from odd villages, um, as soon as uh, Sunday, Sunday service is over, they fly back. The first time I celebrated Easter here was, that's when they spent the whole night um, celebrating Easter morning and I wanted to come back again and I didn't think I was ever going to come back to Kivalina again, but I did. Later in the evening, the town will host a giant potlatch to celebrate the arrival of all the visitors to Kivalina and officially start the holiday weekend. Kivalina is people, a warm, the greetings that they give, it's a time of sharing, it's not just um, something for yourself, it's something that people give to other villages. Well, it's a special occasion for the people here in all around in the, in the area. It's a day of rejoice. The people like to eat. Yeah. They like to eat good food in Kivarina. I want to hear all the singing. You can see all the people from all over the state. <laughs> Friends, relatives, my parents. This Easter thing that goes on around here is like a tradition. I feel like a little girl again. <laughs>
Music and song have as much to do with the Easter weekend as any meal served, feeding the souls of the worshipers with praise for the holiday. Every year they had the program here in Chimolina. They're, they're getting to meet a lot of people all, all the time for Easter program. How our program runs when we, when, when we run it, we mix them all up. Okay, there will be at least two songs from Notak, maybe two songs from Kivalina, Point Hope. To you wherever they came from, we gave them a chance. village in this area to celebrate Easter with a large gathering. It started from Tony and then from Milton and Martha Swan. That was the priest, first deacon in Alaska. Born in the heart of an Inupiaq man, now the love of music resounds throughout the north. How it began, I heard about the story of Tony Jewell, was the first teacher on me that teaches Milton how to play organ and how to play the gospel song. Singing, what got so important? The singing. I like. I like the singing when people from Puno or Bear or Kachibi and Otak, Selwick, when they come into town and they sing. As a, as a boy, as a boy growing up, I caught that singing, the gospel singing, and that's what makes it so important for me to. I mean, you know, the feeling it got into me, and I I liked it. Our people, they do sing with, with all their hearts. The most important thing for me is to make sure that, that the message of our songs get across. We always um, tell our kids to put their whole heart into their singing because when they put their whole heart into their singing, the genuineness of what they're singing about does get through. The Easter holiday also signals the annual bowhead whale hunt, which has been an annual tradition for many generations. The two events seem to exist easily, side by side. Local tradition begins this season with a blessing by the church for the hunters. The whaling captains will bring their darting gun, their whale bomb, and the stern of the paddle. And, and the priest in charge will, will bless these so that when they take them out to the ice, these that are blessed, which the captain used will be the first one that he's going to grab and dart into the whale and should kill with one bomb, one dart, one, one shoulder gun. This one here is my, the, the jawbone of a whale that we had caught in 87. 
and it's been quite some time since we get another one. We're still waiting. Some some years we're lucky, some years we're not. As we were taught spiritually about the communication between human and the bowhead whales. Although the blessing will take place before the Easter holiday, the whaling will not begin until after the full holiday is over in town. Right now, we are kind of ready to go, but we don't really go whaling until the Easter is done. We kind of put the Easter first. The strength of the people depends largely on their hunting skills, which is still the main occupation for most males in the area. By next week, this whole town pretty much will be out in the ocean and see if whales come. Life in Kivalina may not be easy, but neither is it impossible. People here have survived far harsher climate changes than the cold front issued by the state's education board and various media outlets concerning their public school. In order to survive any storm is to practice patience, much like the whale hunters on the open seas. And with the right amount of time and public support, the storm will blow over. The people of Kivalina are rich in tradition and history, and they will remain and prosper long after the storm has passed. I'd like to thank the good people in Kivalina, Alaska for inviting Heartbeat Alaska to join them for their annual Easter celebration. My grandfather, Tony Jewell, by the way, used to teach school in that beautiful community. And I'd like to thank you for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Information. Email me at geniegreen at ak.net. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again next week.